Jasmine Ogamal? Yeah, sorry, because I just wanted to jump in here because I think that there's a really important thread that we're that we're um, neglecting to to bring out as part of this discussion. Um, I actually have always said that President Trump's Syria policy, it's it, it's always been clear in the sense that he's always had two um, go, two two strategic goals in Syria. One was uh, defeating ISIS. And the other one that we haven't mentioned yet, which is really important, is countering Iranian influence. And so if you take, if you add that aspect, the countering Iranian influence into it, um, it starts to make a lot more sense. You know, the president's policy, this president's policy on Syria has always been clear. My only problem with it has been the way that he's conducted his policy. We've always known that he wanted to leave Syria. It's just the way that he does it is so... Um, it's knee-jerk reactions and not consulting with our allies and not telling our partners ahead of time, leaving them very confused. But in the it, sense of what he wants to achieve, and that just brings me to the point that I wanted to add to this uh, to this last discussion, is that if you look at the residual troops that he's um, that he's keeping in Syria, it's not just about the oil. It's not just about countering ISIS. It's very much about keeping sort of one American foot in the door, just enough to let the Iranians know that they can't wreak havoc and do whatever they want in Syria, including building a land bridge to Hezbollah in Lebanon. That's a really important point that I think we, we need not forget. Well, why pull back? Why uh, have that abrupt pullback from the Turkish border then? Because it doesn't interest him. Mm -hmm. It doesn't interest him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he and, and, and remember that this is a president who is constantly at odds with his advisors. I think if a lot of his advisors, these career officials were in charge, the policy and the way that it's being conducted would look very different. But, you know, when it comes to who owns Syria, quote unquote, who has the most influence inside of Syria, President Trump wants nothing to do with that. He's more than happy to have the Turks deal with the Kurds on their own, to have the Russians mediate and have influence over Assad. He really doesn't care. What he cares about is minimizing Iranian influence and their link to Hezbollah in Lebanon and to making sure that ISIS doesn't grow into the threat that it was before. And that just brings me to the final point that I wanted to make, which is that Baghdadi's death is really important, especially for people who have had victim, who have been victimized by Daesh. I've had a friend whose wife lost a brother uh, and a husband, and so this is really important to people like her. But this is one man, and whether or not the organization structurally suffers, I think it's really important to keep in mind that all of the root causes, the grievances that allowed the organization to feed on so many people's grievances and recruit so many people are still there. And that's something that won't be dealt with from a counterterrorism lens or perspective.